Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share a very beautiful and powerful message on the secret place and how we must learn how to be still and know Him. And I'm going to share insight from A.B. Simpson. This is a powerful message that really blessed me. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, it be such fresh manna to you that it blesses you out of your socks. Father, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, that you would speak to each person. Let it be a targeted, perfect word that comes with such an anointing to break every yoke. Father, that bring them deeper revelation of who they are in Christ and who you are. Father, I thank you that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart, so that the word, we would hear it and mix it with faith and receive it. Let your word produce in us and through us, and Jesus be glorified. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen. In Psalm 46, verse 10, and I'm going to read it first from the King James Version. Be still and know that I am God. In the New American Standard Version, it says, Cease striving and know that I am God. That word, know, is yada in Hebrew. And it means to perceive and to see, to discriminate and to know by experience. We, I'm sorry, that word know there, I think I said the wrong word. The word know is yada. And God desires that we would come into that secret place and see Him and know Him and develop inside of us through experience a real intimate relationship with Him. But what hinders is that first part. What so is the blockage is strife and the fact that we cannot simply be still to know Him. A.B. Simpson said this, Then came the conflict of thoughts for tomorrow, with its duties and cares. But God said, Be still. And as I listened, and slowly learned to obey, and shut my, eye, my ears to every sound, I found after a while that when the other voice ceased, or I ceased to hear and heed them, there was a still, small voice in the depths of my being that began to speak with an inexpressible tenderness, power, and comfort. How many of us have come into prayer and you sit down, you dedicate time, and you are sincere, seeking His face. And all of a sudden, all these voices rise. Did you turn this off? Did you pay that bill? Things that are not even critical. That bill that really doesn't matter, but the enemy will use all kinds of things to distract you, to keep you in that place of strife because there's no strife in the presence of the living God and it will keep you out. It will hinder you. That is why God calls us to be still. Stop striving. Stop being filled with cares and worries. Stop because the secret place is a silent place. It's a place where all the voices have to become silent in our life so that we hear only His voice, and we are listening only to His voice. A.B. Simpson went on to say this, As I listened, it became to me the voice of prayer, and the voice of wisdom, and the voice of duty, and I did not think it so hard, but that still small voice of the Holy Spirit in my heart was God's prayer in my secret soul. And we live in an hour where it's become increasingly challenging. What do you do? How do I do? There's so many decisions we have to make. There's so much pressure on us. And the answers are found in that secret place. Most importantly, we need the Holy Spirit in this place where we recognize we are weak. I don't know what to pray. Everything is so beyond my understanding and knowledge that God, I'm throwing myself on you. Holy Spirit, I am weak. I don't know. But in this weakness, pray through me. And He will 
if we will learn to come and in the secret place be still in that secret place surrender and allow him to work through us stop all the voices that would steal our attention he went on to say we cannot go through life strong and fresh on constant express trains with 10 minutes for lunch but we must have quiet hours secret places of the most high times of waiting upon the lord when we renew our strength and learn to mount up on wings of eagles and then come back to run and not be weary and to walk and not be faint i like as i listen to those words the thing he's implying is not just to simply come with some kind of prayer list so that our only relationship in prayer and this only intimacy with the Lord is a prayer list, but rather to wait, rather to take time to linger. And in the waiting, and if I've been to a good restaurant, when I go there, I like waiters that attend, watch, and are there to make sure that I am all my needs are met in the secret place. I want my eyes off of me. There can be no focus on me. It's on him. Even the chair, we like the imagery, of course, is the, of the Holy of Holies, where there's no natural light, everything is dark, and there you have the Ark of the Covenant and the cherubim cover their faces because the only focus is to be on Jesus. All the honor is to go to Jesus. No other voice, no other thing is allowed to rise up. We cannot allow our worries, our concerns, anything of us, of this world, to take ownership or, or be loud in us. It's Jesus. I come to wait. I come to focus on you. I come because you are absolute everything. I want to please you. Attend and hear every word that you have to say. I need you. Do we even recognize that? Do we come in such humility saying, God, I need to hear what you have to say. I need your Holy Spirit to pray through me. I can't face tomorrow. I can't face today unless you pray through me. I look at the life of Jesus and how recognizing the real situation, the real battle, would get up in the early hours and get alone with the Father in the secret place of His presence and would pray and seek His face and said with loud cries that came from the depth of His being by the Spirit. I look at the story of Elijah, and this is where most of us get. Elijah, who had called fire from heaven, demonstrated mighty power, and then Jezebel challenges him. And he gets full of fear because that anointing had fallen on him when he was making that stand and building that altar. But when the anointing was gone, he didn't have the strength in his spirit to stand. He didn't have the confidence. And so he begins to run and he gets weary. And he runs finally to what this place, which was the Mount of the Lord, comes into the cave. And he experiences his breakthrough, not in the running, not in any loud noise and great demonstration, not in any angels appearing, he saw them, but in the still, small voice. A voice that was spoken as a whisper because the Lord had come so close that he was able to simply whisper to him. Oh, the Lord wants us to have such a relationship that He is so close to us that He can whisper. A.B. Sinton said this, The best thing about this stillness is that it gives God a chance to work. He that entereth into His rest hath ceased from His own works, even as God did His. When we cease from our works, God works in us. All those issues in life, those struggles and things where we've been trying to change and transform, trying to be better, trying to be more loving, trying all those things. But it's all been us. Here in the secret place, I cease. I stop trying and I simply be still and know. He is God. He is the Almighty God. He is the Most High. He's bigger than me greater than me, greater than my trials, my tribulations, greater than my challenges, my difficulties. He's bigger. 
My eyes are not on them anymore because too much of our time is focused on those things that we make so big in our lives, the things we can't overcome. But in the secret place, all eyes on Jesus. And as we dare to choose to be still and make that commitment and consecration to be still and know by experience that He is the Almighty God, He is the Most High God, that revelation as we cease to work allows Him to do such a great, deep, and bigger work in us. In Psalm 46, verse 10b and 11, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Now, I quoted already the first part, be still and know. But the rest of that verse is, I will be exalted among the nations. See, when we come and we are still and we know, do you know what happens? He will be exalted. He will be exalted in your life, in your circumstances, and in your world. The Lord of hosts, the, the, that means the, the Lord of the armies of heaven. He has more than enough to take a care of whatever battle or challenge you're facing. No matter what the enemy's throwing against you, the battle belongs to the Lord and He's got a greater army. He is your stronghold. A.B. Simpson went on to say, when we cease from our thoughts, God's thoughts come into us. When we get still from our restless activities, God worketh in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. And we have but to work it out. And here in this wonderful place, that Holy Spirit teaches us, walks with us every single day, this new life where we now desire to do and to will His good pleasure. It's a different life. We step into a new order of the Spirit. We walk in and by the Spirit. We walk victorious no matter what life throws at us. We have a peace and a confidence because we are found in the stronghold of the Lord. He went on to say, Beloved, let us take, this, take His stillness. Let us dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Let us enter into God and His eternal rest. Let us silence our sounds and let we can hear the still, small voice. Sometimes God has got like Elijah to get us away from all the noise of the world that we live in to that place where we're simply with Him. That's the secret place. And you can enter the secret place at any time, any place, anywhere. It's a positioning. It's a humility. It is being still to know. Taking every voice and silencing it so that the only voice that matters is His, not even yours. God, I need to hear you. It's not you need to hear me. God, I need to hear you. He went on to say, there is another kind of stillness, the stillness that lets God work for us and we can hold our peace, the stillness that ceases from controversy and self-indication and expedience of wisdom and forethought and let God provide and answer the unkind word, the cruel blow in His own unfailing faithful love. How many of you have had a situation where you don't know how to respond or what to say? In the secret place, if we practice, if we learn to dwell here, if we learn to silence our voice and allow Him to work in us, we may fail. And I'm so grateful, Second Peter, if you practice these things, I get back up, get back into the secret place, get washed by the blood and say, teach me. I need to learn my voice needs to be silenced because the problem we have so often where the strife and issues come is that we need to be heard. But as I learn in the secret place that God, I just need to hear you and allow his voice to be the most important principal voice. He then gives me wisdom, what to do, how to do it, when to do it, what words to say, and that they're words in season and they're right seasoned with salt. He said this, there's no spectacle in all the Bible so sublime as the silent Savior answering not a word to men that were mal maligning him and whom he could have laid prostrate at his feet 
by only the look of divine power, our one fiery word of rebuke. But he let them do their worst, and he stood in the power of stillness, God's holy lamb. It's hard to imagine, but if the Holy Spirit, if you'll let him, will give you revelation. Jesus, on that day, through his trial, through his way to the cross and his hanging on the cross, all that he went through looked like he was utterly, completely defeated. But he was being still and quiet for you. He didn't stand and say, you've got to hear my voice. When we're in trial and tribulation, people are attacking us, our rights. You've got to hear what I have to say. Most people, the reason we get offended is people didn't hear ourselves. We don't want to be walked over. Yet Jesus, it looked like he was utterly defeated, walked over. But he was doing it for you and me. We need the revelation of what he went through on that day for us to bring us to victory. And that now, if we will learn to silence our voice and hear his in the secret place of his presence, it will change us and bring us into the real victory. I will finish with this. God give us this silent power, this mighty self-surrender, this conquered spirit, which will make us more than conquerors through him that loved us. So, Father, I just pray that for each person listening, that as we learn to be still and know, that it would bring the place where you're exalted in us, and as a consequence, we become more than conquerors. We so seek through our own efforts to gain the victory. We so seek through our own voice to somehow be heard, thinking that we need to have and defend our rights. But as we let go in the secret place and trust to you, that you are our vindication, you are our exceedingly great reward, and that you are greater, you are the Most High God. You are the Almighty, El Shaddai, more than sufficient. And there's not one problem that you cannot bring us the victory. I thank you that as we surrender, you transform us. You pour into us that we might pour forth. We become so utterly changed that we show and magnify you. We become the company that we keep, you. Father, I thank you for each person. May they truly be blessed, encouraged, and strengthened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I pray this episode has blessed you. I encourage you to check out more in this series of where I'm looking at the various heroes of faith and what they said on The Secret Place. We also have another series on The Secret Place itself and on the simple steps of experiencing The Secret Place. We've done a lot on The Secret Place to really help you develop an intimacy with the living God in this late hour. I pray, as I said, this message has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe. And as you do so, you help us with the algorithms of YouTube and Google to reach more people. Check out more videos on The Secret Place, Spiritful Living. May they provoke, encourage, and strengthen you to live boldly for Jesus in this hour. Thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.